Sure enough, the esrik falls on the floor and starts rolling until the end of the room. Shmuel Leib lived in the Bronx. He was 16 years old. He had just graduated Torah Vadas. He didn't want to go to work and he found an alternative. The Baba Verever of Shleimah Halberstam Zatzal had just opened up a yeshiva in the Upper West Side of Manhattan. And because of his background and wanting to stay in yeshiva, he decided that he would go to learn in the Baba Yeshiva. Now it was almost Sukkot that was approaching and the minig in Babiv is that the Bacharim do not have their own Esrug and Lulav. But rather, right before Halal, they will go into the Sukkah, make the bracha on the Esrug and Lulav of the Rebbe, and then go back into Shul and continue Halal. Now the reason that this was done was really because years ago in Europe, there was a lack of funds, and one family could not necessarily afford to purchase five, six, or even 10 sets for their children and grandchildren of an Esrig and Lulav. So by having the minig where you go to the Rebbe and make the bracha, it's both an honor and also a cost savings for the family. Shmuel learned in the yeshiva, but lived in the Bronx. So it was Chalamoid and he wanted to partake and be part of this. Although he davened in the morning, by the time he came with the train to the Upper West Side, they had finished davening, of course. So he went over to the Rebbe in the Rebbe's study and said, Rebbe, although I davened and I missed the davening this morning, I do want to be part of this tradition and I didn't bench Esrig and Lulav. Can I please borrow the Rebbe's Esrig and Lulav to make the bracha and be Mekayim, the mitzvah of Esrig and Lulav? The Rebbe turns to him and says, of course, Shmuelayb. And the Rebbe says, come. They go into the study the Rebbe takes out the esrig and the lulav from its place, opens it up, turns it upside down as is the minhag. So you make the bracha turned upside down and then you turn it over in order to shake the esrig and lulav together. And Shmuel is thinking there's only one esrig the Rebbe is using, the Rebbe's wife, and all the bacharim in the yeshiva. What happens if this esrog were to fall to the floor when I turn it over and it breaks? It's going to hurt the Rebbe. It's going to be such an embarrassment to the entire yeshiva and everyone will know that I did it. And of course, he was only 16 years old and that thought ran through his mind. The Rebbe hands him the esrog and because he's so nervous that this may happen, sure enough, the esrog falls on the floor and starts rolling until the end of the room. He's frozen. He can't think. He can't bend down and pick it up. He can't even look. And the Rebbe takes the initiative to walk to the end of the room where it stopped rolling too and pick it up. And he didn't know what the next words out of the Rebbe's mouth would be. The Rebbe turns to him and says, Shmuleib, with a smile, the warm smile that the Rebbe had. He says, Shmuleib, the esrig did not break. Come, let's continue to make the bracha and continue to shake the esrig and lulav. From what a second ago was a horror story and a bad dream turned into a relief. And then the Rebbe continues and the Rebbe says, Shmuel, I want you to know you're 16 years old. You have a heart condition which is called rheumatic fever. I want you to know that the Arba Minim, the four items that we use composed together to shake the Esrig and Lulav, the, Ar the Arba Minim are the Esrig, the Lulav, Hadassim and Aravos. Those resemble different parts of the person's body and the Esrig represents the heart. Now remember, you have a weak heart. You have rheumatic fever. Now just like this Esrig was strong and it did not break, so too your esrig, your heart, will also be strong and will not break. Now this was actually a huge bracha. What was a bad dream just a moment ago turned not only into okay, but it turned into a bracha that the Rebbe gave him that his heart would be strong. Now of course immediately he didn't think much after he left the Rebbe's study. 
and especially wouldn't repeat the story because he didn't want the Bacharim and the yeshiva to know that he had just dropped the Rebbe's esrig. And many years passed, he got married, he became a Rav in a shul, and it was 32 years later, he was sitting in the sukkah with his family, and he said, you know, I want to tell you an interesting story that happened to me many years ago. He was 48 years old at the time. He said, when I was 16, and he starts repeating the story, and he says, you know, it's 32 years since the Rebbe gave me the bracha, and Esrik Doimel Alev, Lev is also 32, isn't that interesting? And his family listens to the story in awe because they've never heard it before. And right after Sukkot, he passed away. He passed away three and a half weeks after Sukkot. And when speaking to the Hasidim, they said when the Rebbe gave him a bracha, that it should be strung like a lave, it was a hidden bracha, that he should have that extra 32 years, which is bigematria lave, which the numeric value adds up to 32. And that story was told to me by my father Shmuleib, who passed away when he was 48 years old after receiving this amazing bracha or the hidden bracha from the Baba Rebbe Zatzal.